And a very pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Tornado Talk, where we talk all things Brevard College Tornado Athletics. Glad you're able to sh- join us this evening. We have an exciting show on tap. It's our first time back on the air since spring break for the student body, and campus is buzzing once again. Spring sports in the air and in action pack spring season already underway here at Brevard College. We'll be talking track and field. We'll have guests from women's lacrosse, softball, and baseball as well on the show. But do want to catch you up on all the latest updates from throughout the action at Brevard College. Baseball, a big sweep over Southern Virginia over the weekend. A 3-0 and start in USA South Conference play. Next up for the baseball team, a trip to Pfeiffer as USA South Conference play continues Saturday and Sunday. Softball, they went on the road to Myrtle Beach over spring break where they had a bunch of softball games, uh, all sorts of opponents from all over the country, three wins at Myrtle Beach. Off weekend coming up for softball, they'll be back in action at the BC softball field on Friday, March the 29th. Mark your calendars for that. That's the season opener on the conference side for the softball team at home. And then Southern Virginia will be the opponent on Saturday a doubleheader starting at 1 o'clock. That's March 30th. Men's and women's tennis, they'll be taking on William Peace this weekend. Action on both Saturday and Sunday. Look forward to that. And next week, we'll have some guests here live from the the tennis program. So if you're a fan of Brevard College men's or women's tennis, be sure to tune in next week, Monday night, same time, same channel. Men's lacrosse coming off a big win, 11-3 to over Wilmington this past week. It included some accolades for Tyler Cameron, named USA South Conference Rookie of the Week for men's lacrosse. Congratulations, Tyler. Next up for men's lacrosse, a trip to Southern Virginia on Saturday. That's an 11 a.m. start. And then back at home on Saturday the 30th, that's your next home game for Brevard College men's lacrosse at Islamel Family Field versus Methodist. Women's lacrosse, a big 14-2 win over William Peace, a resounding start to the USA South Conference competition for the women's lacrosse team. Paige Kneibler, who will be a guest later on the program, was USA South Defensive Player of the Week. Congratulations, Paige. Next up for women's lacrosse at NC Wesleyan, 1 o'clock on Saturday in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And next home game, a special 4 p.m. start on Wednesday, March the 27th at Isla Mel Family Field. That brings us to track and field, who's off to a real hot start in this 2024 season. Two meets in the bag already, and love seeing these results come in, and can't wait to to talk track and field with our guest this evening. We're going to invite into the show Director of Track and Field, Josh Hall, joining the program. Coach Hall, how are you? Doing good, Phil. How are you? Outstanding. And especially, you know, coming off a, a weekend like we just witnessed from the, the track and field team, but would like to, to review the season to date. And it started with the Susan Rouse Invitational down in South Carolina a couple weeks ago and all sorts of outstanding results from that one as well. Coach, if you can reflect back a little bit on that opening meet of the weekend and how that went for the team. Yeah, uh, honestly, I think we're off to a really hot start. Uh, I think we're doing some good things, but it also showed us like what we need to work on. Um, And that's pretty much like a rust buster meet that we planned. Uh, I think we're starting to get into the groove of things as of right now. Uh, But already PR, there's a lot of kids that made some big PRs already, and they're just going to keep on growing. Yeah, no doubt about that. And would love to get into some of the specifics with you. Two weeks later in this past weekend, a trip to Lenore Rhine over in Hickory, North Carolina, not too far in terms of travel. And the Tornadoes had another big weekend there. Tell us a little bit about that meet. Yeah, uh, like I said, it's still progressing. Like a lot of good things happened. Um, Still things that I can see that we need to work on. Uh, But Phil, I'll tell you, like I'm I'm liking where we're starting off in this season, uh, especially for not competing at an indoor season. Uh, which is kind of cool, which we're getting next year. Um, and so I think like the start that we've had and we're how we mixing up with the conference right now, I think that we're in really good shape and we're just going to keep on building. Um, some of the things that I think went really well was our throws. Uh, jumps went really good this weekend. 
and some of our middle distance group. They really showed out. Yeah, great stuff indeed. And LR Bears open this past weekend. And yeah, reviewing some of those results, Coach, you know, just, just a quick glance at them. Haley Lane Miller, multiple events that she competed in. 400 meters on the on the women's side also the 100 meter hurdles and the women's long jump Channing Barker finishes in fourth place in the 800 also finishes in the top 10 in the 1500 um that's just a couple from the women's side uh, let's focus on the women's side a little bit coach you know from from the, the those runners that i mentioned you know you've got some some other distance runners as well you've got you know throwers we're going to have one of them on the show in, in just a bit here as well a versatile group especially when i see athletes competing in multiple events like that yeah, and that's uh, part of the new trend around here is uh, I told these kids when I first got in here, I like to experiment. Uh, and so Haley Lane Miller is a perfect case for that. Like she she's never long jump in her life before. And then all of a sudden she's first in the conference right now. Uh, Channing Barker, who you'll see, uh, like you mentioned before, uh, she's actually going to try some high jump this next meet. Uh, so it's a lot of experimenting. And I think it's uh, moving in the right direction uh, because the more points, the better come conference time. Yeah. And that's an interesting point coach, because what it um, shifts my attention to is the steeplechase in this past week weekend we had Sandra Diaz Martinez on the women's side 3000 meter steeplechase and then on the men's steeplechase Garrett Spangler that's an event that probably sometimes you know you don't necessarily have experienced athletes at that specific event can you tell us a little bit about the the steeplechase and what it takes to be a collegiate steeplechase athlete it takes a lot of guts <laughs> um a lot of drive too um a lot of endurance training for that um you have to know how to hurdle how to get your feet wet literally um, and learn how to run almost two miles going over five to six barriers in your way that do not move, um, as, as well adding a water pit into it as well uh, every lap. So getting your feet wet constantly, going around a track. Um, and the steeplechase is a fun event to watch, but it's gruesome to those athletes. Like it takes all the energy out of them. Yeah, we're going to talk to Jackson Wilkerson later as well. Four different events uh, at least by my count this past weekend, javelin, high jump, long jump, 110 meter hurdles. And also our other guest uh, who's going to be coming on, Isabel Musser, you know, she's been working in four different throwing events. So again, to this this versatility, you know, what does it take from from the athlete standpoint to be able to handle this many events on a, on a, not just on a weekend, but in preparation? Honestly, um, I got to give all of them the credit. Uh, they they are determined. They are willing to work. Um, it's that hard work dedication, uh, that I preach at practice every day. Um, and that's all I ask for them to do is, Hey, give me 110% every day to get better. And, uh, pretty much that that's about it. Um, and they show it, Th those are some of my leaders on the team and they are the ones that kind of push the rest of the group to, for that. As we look ahead, a, a big weekend coming up. This is an event that the Tornadoes traditionally have, have been a part of. It's a well-run event over in, in Montreat, North Carolina, the Montreat Invitational, a two-day event, Friday and Saturday. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect at Montreat this weekend? A lot of great competition. Uh, a lot of teams, there's going to be a lot of good competition there. Uh, I know for a fact there's going to be a couple of D1 teams there, uh, Western and UNC Asheville. Uh, a lot of NAIs, a lot of D2s, and some D3s there. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of good competition that I think will actually get us ready. Um, and how the schedule laid out as well um, fits perfectly with us because the events that we're wanting to do, uh, we're going to go in fresh and ready to run. Fantastic. Yeah. Nearby, hopefully fans can can make their way over to Montreal and check out the Tornadoes and root the Tornadoes on in that one. But even closer to home, on Friday, April the 12th, mark your calendars for the inaugural Tornado Classic at the Frank Patton track. The Tornadoes will be hosting a meet right here. I know this was a, a vision of yours, Coach, when you came on board. Now it's becoming a reality. Uh, please tell our audience a little bit what they can expect on Friday, April 12th. Yeah, um, I am very excited for this. And honestly, it's been a dream of mine to host a track meet. Um, I've had a little bit of experience in meet management when I was at Western Carolina coaching. Um, so I've got a little bit of experience, but how you watch a track meet is 
sit far back, keep your head on a swivel because there's a lot of moving parts. Um, you got throws, jumps, sprints, distance, pretty much all going on off at the same time. Um, especially when the field events collide with the running events. I mean, it's, it's fun to watch with a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. Before we, we let you go, coach, do want to mention another big piece of news that came across the, the wire over these past couple of weeks, a uh, new addition to the program from the coaching side, new head cross country coach, also assistant track and field coach, Cameron Eisenhower. Be sure to uh, go to bctornadoes.com if you want to read about uh, Coach Cameron and you know all of his background and so forth. But I know this is big news for the program, Coach, and something you're excited about to have you know such an addition like this to your coaching staff. Yeah, I am very excited to have some help around here, um, especially on the recruiting side, getting more kids in here. Um, and having him uh, already a, being a part of this uh coaching staff has been a big help. Uh, he's already working on recruiting stuff. Uh, he's actually doing some really good work and we've been talking, we've been in communication and uh, I'm excited for him to really get onto campus and get started. Absolutely. Looking forward to, to coach uh, getting on campus and, and making this even more of a reality, but great yes. to have him on board. Congratulations, uh, coach, that that addition to the program. Well, coach, can you stick around a couple moments longer? We're going to invite in a couple of your student athletes into the program and looking forward to conversation with these two Jackson Wilkerson in that lower right location Isabel Musser in the lower left we touched on these two briefly during our conversation coach Hall but would love to hear from your perspective you know just uh, what these two mean to the program and you know just how special of student athletes these two are yeah um, these are two of my leaders that are on the team uh I have several leaders that are on the team. Uh, don't get me wrong. There is a ton of talent out there, but these two, uh, they come to work. They come to work every day. Uh, 110%. Uh, they are the ones that push the others. Uh, and uh, they are the ones that are uh, mo motivational towards the other team. They keep it alive out there. Outstanding. Well, appreciate that coach. Um, I know you guys are hard at work preparing for the Montreat event. And then beyond that, you know, hosting the, the Tornado Classic. Can't wait for that as well. Great to have you here on Tornado Talk this evening. Great start to the season, Coach. Can't wait to see what's next. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Phil. All right, there he goes, Coach Josh Hall. And join now as Coach Hall helped us introduce these two, Jackson Wilkerson in that upper right location. How are you, Jackson? I'm doing good, Phil. How about yourself? Doing great. And Isabel Musser has joined us as well. How are you, Isabel? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Well, it's great to be with you guys talking some track and field and would love to hear from each of you. And we'll start with Jackson. You know, how has the season been so far? Two meets in the books. Uh, how are you guys feeling? How are you feeling personally as well? Personally, um, a little sore, but uh, ain't nothing that they can't fix. But ultimately, I feel like we're doing pretty good. We're looking a lot better. We actually got more drive this year than previous years. Um, really thankful for Coach because he's he was doing it by himself. Just come find out we got an assistant coach. That's awesome. But he's been doing this all by himself, and he really pushes us every day to really want to do best, and he wants to see us succeed. So I feel like we can. Yeah, well said, Jackson. Isabel, what's your perspective on the season thus far and, you know, kind of, you know, the the spot you guys are in at this point of the season? Um, I think this season's going really well so far. I've seen a lot of my teammates do things they haven't done before, you know, hitting new PRs, um, doing events they haven't done before. So I think we're in a really good spot, especially for the rest of the season. Yeah, I get a feeling that's going to be sort of the theme to this year with the track and field program, you know, the, this versatility of events. And let's touch on that, Jackson. Let's, you know, four events this weekend, javelin, high jump, long jump, and 110 hurdles. All four of them, completely different skill sets, completely different, you know, movements of the body, all these things. Go ahead in as much detail as you like, Jackson. What does it take to compete in those four specific events? And, you know, how did you approach it? So pretty much just run in head first. Um, I did it a lot throughout high school. So having a bunch of events isn't anything really new to me. But now being able to actually like potentially do all events that I haven't been able to see before, such as jab for the first time. I thought that was a pretty fun thing to do. But to pretty much be able to do all of it, I feel, you just kind of have to be really on your toes and aware. 
and just kind of feel like you have to have a little bit of stamina and just know how the how the meet's going to run and it just feels nicer. Is there one of those events, Jackson, that you feel most at home at? That's sort of the one you, you've got the most experience at and that's just really in your comfort zone? Um, to be quite honest with you, that, that lineup that I had besides maybe Javelin, uh, that was my lineup all throughout high school, which is long, triple, high, 110s. So, nah. Yeah, the, the great stuff to have that kind of the versatility. You add the triple jump in there as well, and there's there's five events uh, for for Jackson Wilkerson, Isabel. You know, a, a thrower. You, you've had a tremendous success since arriving at Brevard College, and let's talk about that same topic: shot put, discus, hammer, javelin. Tell us a little bit how you sort of approach those different disciplines and you know how you manage the preparation but also the execution on any given weekend yeah i mean it's it's a lot they're all very different especially the technique um i'm lucky enough to have had some experience in shot and disc for so long that you know working on hammer and jab lately hasn't been too much of a stressor or too many things that are too new to me um, but it's, it's definitely a lot to try to figure out these new movements and to separate the different techniques from each other but it's going pretty good so far and same question I have for Jackson. Is, is there one that, you know, again, is sort of your sweet spot and that, you know, comes easy? And what's the biggest challenge on the flip side for you? So I really I really like long jump and triple jump, but triple jump kind of being like my more so favorite. But my second phase in triple jump is really biting me. But that would have to be the best. The best, my favorite event, but then the worst part about it. And how about you, Isabel? Is there, is there one that's sort of your comfort zone and one that's the, the biggest challenge? You know, it changes every, I would say every day, but also every meet. Probably I'm most comfortable with shot and disc. Right now, probably disc because I'm working on a new shot form, but it just depends. Very good. Great stuff. By the way, Isabel, a big uh, award coming off that first meet, a week ending March the 4th, USA South Field Athlete of the Week. Isabel, uh, can you reflect back on that and uh, how'd you hear about it and how did it feel to win that award? Yeah, it was definitely something I wasn't expecting. Um, it got me by surprise. I was at practice. I was putting on like my shoes, changing up. And coach was like, we're gonna have to add a new nickname. And I was like, what are we talking about? And he was like, you got field athlete of the week. And I was like, you're kidding. And then I see I got uh, an email from Miranda saying congratulations and I had no clue. And my phone starts blowing up while I'm in practice. It was definitely um, a shock and a different experience for me. Yeah, Miranda Nash, Director of Athletics. Uh, always great to, to hear for her, from her on, on such a subject like that. And Jackson, I know that pumps up the whole team when there's hardware like that, you know, being being issued for the track and field team. Tell me how that sort of, you know, um, is contagious and, and resonates through the team when you guys hear news like that. So we we are a pretty tight-knit family when it's the, the track team. So we see each other win, and we love to see this. So – like I have a uh, Kellen, Fre Kellen. He's a freshman. He's jumping. He can keep up with me. But we push each other every day, and we got a bunch of people here on the team that can push each other. So it's just going to be that much better for the team. Yeah, it ma makes a lot of sense, Jackson. Well, we talked to Coach about it on April the twelfth. Want all of our uh, members of NATO Nation to mark their calendar Friday, April the twelfth, at the Frank Patton Track, which is right here on campus. You know, you can, you can basically, you know, roll out of your dorm room or your office and, and uh, make your way over there in, in no time. Well, the inaugural Tornado Classic is going to be taking place. I know there's a lot of excitement through the program. Isabel, let's start with you. You know, uh, what are the feelings on within the team as far as this opportunity to play in front of the whole crowd, you know, show your stuff, but also have that home field advantage? Yeah, everyone's excited. You know, we don't often get the chance to be at home and to like have our friends and family come and support us. But now we get the home turf advantage and it's kind of just we get the chance to really hone in our abilities and our skills. So it's going to be really fun. Jackson, you excited for this one? Oh, yeah, it's going to be great. not having to wake up at 530 in the morning to go to this meet. Yeah, that that says it all, right? They, you know, they talk about that in sports. You get to sleep in your own bed. That home field advantage goes a long way. Well, before we let you go, do you want to just touch on your academics a little bit, learn what each of you guys are up to in the classroom? Isabel, uh, senior year, uh, tell us what you're working on. What's the degree going to be in? And uh, have you looked beyond that? 
Yeah, um, so I am majoring in biology and minoring in environmental studies, and I'm kind of looking at jobs right now, kind of looking around to see what my next step is. It's kind of up in the air, considering a couple of different options. But yeah, everything's going really good right now. Kind of excited to graduate. Awesome stuff. And Jackson, tell us what you're up to in the classroom. Uh, so majoring in business and minoring in psychology to hopefully help me set up and being able to grow, create, and sell businesses. And if there's ever a need for something, just create a business for it. Very good. Both business and psychology, excellent programs here at Brevard College. Well, before you, we let you go, it's a tradition here at Tornado Talk. You get the opportunity for any thank yous or shout outs, anybody you wanted, you know, say what's up to. We'll start with you, Jackson. The floor is yours. Shout outs. I would like to give a huge shout out to Joshua Hall for bringing this, bringing this track program up and actually caring about us and wanting to see us grow and do great. Um, also want to give out a shout out to the entire team because much love. There it goes. And Isabel, shout outs for you. Definitely got to shout out my mom. The whole team knows her as coach mom at this point. She's at every meet coaching everybody. Um, also got a shout out to Jackie Witherspoon, the middle school coach. She's also out there helping us, supporting us every day when they practice with us. Great stuff. Well, Jackson Wilkerson, Isabel Musser, we can't wait to see what's next with the track and field program. You guys are off to a great start. Good luck this weekend at Montreat. We'll see you on April the 12th at the Frank Patton track for the Tornado Classic. Great job this evening on Tornado Talk. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you, boss man. Thank you, Phil. All right. Well, we're going to transition quickly from track and field to women's lacrosse. And glad to be joined this evening by two Brevard College alums, part of the assistant coaching staff at the women's lacrosse program. Uh, Roya Tomasevi said, hey, Let's get these two on the air this evening and glad to be joined by Coach Casey Collins and Coach Toby Naylor. Coach Collins, how are you? Great, Phil. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you back on the show this time in this different role. And Coach Toby Naylor, now dating back to your football days, Coach, we were like, hey, this is it. This this is the last go around on Tornado Talk. We did it all the way every single year, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior you're coming on more often these days than you did as a, as a student athlete coach. Uh, great to I have know. you on again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm telling you, you can't keep me away. I just love it too much. <laughs> great stuff. Well, coach Collins, let's start with you and we'll get into the, the team and their recent performance in a minute, but do want to just catch up with you two personally a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit, you know, you, you graduate from Brevard college. You, you were a standout uh, student athlete on the women's lacrosse program. And now you're part of this, coaching staff. Tell us about that transition and how it's been going. Yeah, I'm really excited to be back. Um, the whole first year after I graduated college, I came to every home game. I missed lacrosse so much. Um, so when Roya contacted me in the fall and asked if I wanted to um, volunteer assistant coach, I was so excited to say yes. And I've just had such a blast being back and being able to work with the girls, especially some of the girls that I got to play with um, a few years ago. And it's just been so much fun, and I've just been soaking it up. Uh, outstanding. And, and Coach Naylor, your story is a little different because you didn't have much, you know, experience in lacrosse. Uh, you know, you were a football student athlete here at Brevard College. You know, you're looking to get into the coaching profession. You're, you know, graduate student now, and so forth. Tell us a little bit about your decision to, you know, take up this opportunity and how it's been working out for you. Yeah, uh, I'll be all honest. Um, I hadn't even heard of lacrosse before I came to America. In all honesty, I hadn't really heard of the sport. Um, obviously, came to a few games when I was, you know, a student and not working uh, with the team yet and whatnot. Um, and Lex actually was the one who kind of really got me into it. Um, obviously, you know, she's been playing for a while now. And I got the opportunity last year to kind of look into doing a coaching internship. And I was like, well, you know, maybe they need some help, like, a, you know, strength intern or something like that. So I got the opportunity to work with the team last year. And then Roy was nice enough to ask me to come back. And so I'm really glad to be back, taking on more of a role. And I just I really enjoy being around the team and the group of girls that we have. So it's just a pleasure for me. Yeah, great stuff. It's great to have you both on board. You know, um, two two people who definitely know their way around Brevard College and can, you know, relate to the student athletes as well as far as what they need to do, you know, in the classroom and, and all these things. And, you know, obviously getting it done on the field as well. And speaking of which, 
a 14 to two win to open USA South conference play, you know, a resounding win over William peace. You, you can't do better than start one and zero in USA South conference play. And that's exactly what the team did. Coach Collins, what did you witness uh, this past weekend? And, you know, what was the key to that sort of performance and how big was that for the team to, to get off to that kind of start? Yeah, it's huge to start out 1-0 in conference play, and I'm so pleased with the way that game went. Um, from the draw control to defense and everything in between, I think that we dominated on the draw control. We dominated stopping the ball on our defensive end and transitioning it down to our attack, and they really got it done on that side of the field as well. So really everything working well um, on both sides of the field, and especially the transitions. Yeah, it, no doubt about it. And it, the the proof's in the pudding, as they say, you know, with a 14-2 to two win, all those things were clicking. What did you uh, observe, Coach, as Coach Naylor, this past weekend? And, you know, as far as, you know, perhaps the, you know, the attitude of the team and obviously, you know, following through on this one and, and whatever other observations you may have had that made this victory a re reality? Yeah, I think it was really important for team morale. You know, we start in conference play, obviously the level gets turned up in terms of you know, every game really matters now. And so I think starting off with a win, a much needed win, a dominant win of all things, I think it was good to get, you know, the players morale up, get the confidence up, you know, kind of really get some girls some good playing time and just kind of leave feeling real good going into the rest of these games. Yeah, and, you know, the USA South Conference schedule, you know, there's no rest for the weary at this point because, you know, there's mm -hmm. games um, just – you know, every single week you're you're getting ready for another one. Uh, the latest opponent will be NC Wesleyan and Rocky Mount, North Carolina, one o'clock on Saturday. Then back home against Averett on Wednesday, March the 27th. Coach Collins, as someone who's you know lived this sort of you know gauntlet of USA South Conference games um, on the playing field, now in the coaching role, you know what does it take to succeed in a conference like the USA South? It's a lot of determination, like you said. We we take conference really seriously and we take it all kind of at once so it's back to back to back games absolutely um, we'll have a lot of two game weeks so really taking care of yourself and making sure you're putting an effort on and off the field to make sure you're successful in all areas yeah in, in coach you know road trips part of this scenario too you know you've got to deal with opposing fans you're, you're in a different locker room than perhaps you're used to. You saw this on the football side of things as well in the USA South coach. You know, it really does take determination to, to win a uh, conference schedule at, at a high rate. Yeah, definitely. I think conference is, it's just a whole new level of competition. It means so much more. I mean, it seems you play year in and year out. Like some of these girls, have, it's the, you know, they're fourth, third, fifth time playing these teams. So it definitely means a lot to them. And especially road games, it can be intense, but I think some of the girls on our team, like, you know, being the bad guy and kind of going into that away atmosphere and, and taking a win away from them. So I think they uh, they kind of thrive in that atmosphere. So that's good. Casey, one, one more lacrosse question for you on this year's team. I want to kind of dig into a little bit. Two freshman goalkeepers, Kyla Smith-Fondal and Amelia Fuentes. And Lex McLaughlin has moved from the goal to the field. And that sort of reminds me of what you did. You know, you made that transition as a goalkeeper, becoming a, you know, a player in the field and succeeding at such. Could you tell us a little bit about that, you know, your own experience in it, but what you're witnessing this year and how all these pieces are, are you know, falling into place? Yeah, it was um, it was a sudden transition for me. Riz came up to me, I think it was my sophomore year, and said, hey, would you play attack? And I said, okay. And then it just kept going for there. Hey, will you play midfield? Hey, will you play defense? And I just said, I just said, okay, every time. And Lex is on, Lex is doing the same thing. We said, hey, will you play defense? And she said, yes. And she's really run with it as she's been a really big voice in the goal for us. And she's doing the same thing on defense. She's running that defense really, really well. And is such a strong voice down there. And I'm really, really proud of her for all of the learning and growing she's done this season in that, in that aspect. And Amelia and Kyla have really picked up the ball. They're both really strong goalies. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And that that team effort. And we've got you know the the attackers, uh, and of course the the midfielders and, and so forth doing their thing. You get results like we saw the, this past Saturday. Uh, Coach Collins, Coach Naylor. It looks like we've got a couple of women's lacrosse student athletes waiting patiently backstage. So if you can stick around just a couple moments longer, we're going to invite them into the the program here as 
we've got two to a two for one you know in one uh box here Paige Knibler uh, has joined the show also Kelsey Hamrick uh coach Naylor let's start with you tell us a little bit about these two student athletes you know how they contribute to the program and you know what you've witnessed from them uh yeah I'll start with uh Paige because you know obviously this is my second year with Paige now um I really think that Paige is one of the most gifted athletes I've been around I mean everything she does is so natural and so smooth and I'm like oh my word like how did she do that um which is really impressive but what I think my favorite part is that she doesn't just rely on her talent she's still one of the most hard-working girls on the team a captain a leader like she's not she's not just like I'm a good player I can sit back she works really hard and it goes to show obviously winning this defensive player of the of the week award that she she's got and obviously Kelsey I mean Kelsey's like one of the most coachable players like every I'll tell her to do something and it sticks immediately and she'll do it a hundred miles an hour, full speed out sprinting, like every girl on the field. Um, so yeah, it's a real pleasure to coach both of these girls and I'm excited to see what they're going to do for the rest of the season and for their you know futures in general. Great stuff. Coach Collins, tell us even more about these two. Yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? Paige defensive player of the week. She earned it. She had 12 cause turnovers in our last game, which is incredible. School I, record, by the way. Oh, I, it's, she constantly impresses us. I think that every team we play against after the game, they are terrified of going against her on the defensive end for us, I, which I adore. Um, and Kelsey, like Toby said, she hustles for everything. There is, if it is a competition, Kelsey is going 100% all of the time. And <laughs> I just cannot commend that enough. It is awesome to see both of these girls work. Well, well said. Uh, really look forward to our conversation with these two, Paige Kneibler and Kelsey Hamrick, coming up in just a matter of moments. Coach Collins, Coach Naylor, thanks for joining the program. We're great to catch up with with each of you. Love seeing you in this new role as far as the, the coaching staff of women's lacrosse. Uh, best of luck this weekend coming up as USA South Conference play continues. Thanks for joining the show. Thanks, thanks for having Phil. me, Phil. All right, there they go. And as the coaches very, uh, you know, properly introduced these two, look forward to this conversation. Paige Kneibler and Kelsey Hamrick, both on the same screen. Paige, let's start with you. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Paige, let's just stick with you a moment longer because, you know, we mentioned a few times on the show already, defensive player of the week. Congratulations on that officially. How'd you learn about it? You know, how's it feel to be named player of the week? Um, actually I learned about it when my boyfriend was going through Instagram and he was like, Oh my gosh, look. And then he reposted it and then coach sent a text in the group chat and everyone was super sweet about it. Great, great stuff. Well, congratulations officially. What, you know, uh, awesome to be able to celebrate it with you here on tornado talk. And, you know, we, we, we know, uh, this is only going to be the beginning of big things here in the USA South Conference play. Kelsey Hamrick with us as well, freshman midfielder from Newburgh, Indiana. Uh, Kelsey, um, I'm sorry, from Shelby, North Carolina, the, the freshman midfielder. See, the two in one box is, you know, got me, you know, a uh, little, little thrown off here. But Kelsey Hamrick joining us as well, making your Tornado Talk debut. Kelsey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Well, before we let it go, how did you learn about Paige's award? And, you know, is the, is the team celebrating and that kind of thing? You know, what, what does it mean for the team, for, for your teammate Paige, to win that award? I learned about it when Roya texted in the group chat and said that she had got uh, the player. Very good. Well, congratulations once again, Paige. Well, big win this weekend. I mean, a resounding win. Uh, Paige, what were the things you noticed over the weekend as far as, you know, you know, what made that such a, a success and what the team was doing right? I know coming off of a loss, everyone was a little down, but I think Saturday we looked really well playing together and we uh, we put together what we'd been practicing all week. So I was really proud of the girls for that. Yeah, and, and Kelsey, uh, tell us from your perspective, um, you know, obviously the, the win was great, but, you know, what did you see as far as what the team was doing correct on Saturday that led to the big win? Um, we definitely had moved the ball around more and communicated more. We had positive attitudes that game more than we had in the past. And I think that really pulled through for us. And Paige, what do you think the key is going to be moving forward as far as continuing this kind of success and momentum uh, for the team? 
I think we just need to relax. I think we get stressed out when we see the big names and we just got to calm down and play our game. We have the talent to do to go as far as we want to. Yeah, no doubt about that. We've we've seen that, you know, both last year and, and this year as well. Uh, Kelsey, tell us a little bit thus far as far as your experience has been. You know, freshman year, first time as a collegiate student athlete, you've got, you know, players who've been around a, li- a little longer, like Paige Knibler, also, you know, uh, juniors and seniors ahead of you as well. But tell us how it's been for you, you know, as far as this experience as a member of the Brevard College women's lacrosse team now. Um, it's been very different for me as I came from uh, being a soccer player. Um, they definitely have helped me so much, and especially Roya. She corrects me during practices and helps me throughout it. Coach Roya Tomasabi. And Kelsey, let's stick with you. You said you came as a soccer player, and that's your background. But tell us a little more, you know, um, soccer, the sport it sounds like you played growing up. But when did sort of this light bulb come on that you could play lacrosse as well? Um, I had actually texted somebody and I never knew, like lacrosse is not a big thing around my part, uh, where I live. So I texted somebody and they really reached out to me and it just kept going on. And now I'm here. And and one last one on that subject, Kelsey, you know, what, what's the most challenging part as far as, you know, learning a new sport, you know, specifically women's lacrosse, what, you know, what's the biggest challenge in the, in that? Um, I would say the biggest challenge is keeping the ball in the stick. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's It was very hard for me to do that. And they've just been so good at helping me without that. Paige Knibler with us as well. Paige, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, as a lacrosse player. Were you playing lacrosse from, from an early age? And if not, you know, how did that evolve? I actually didn't start playing. So I played hockey up until I was in my freshman year of high school. And unfortunately, I couldn't continue playing that in the area that I was in. So I picked up a new sport and I started playing women's lacrosse my freshman year of high school. And then um, I really started to love it. So I looked at colleges that I could play at and I ended up here. Outstanding. And uh, tell us a little bit, you know, about your experience here at Brevard College, Paige. You know, are are you enjoying, you know, the the experience of being here in the mountains a little different than than Indiana? (laughs) It is very different from Indiana. The first time I came here, I loved it. Um, my ears popped a lot, but it was fun, and I haven't wanted to leave since. So I I love the school. Very good. Well, great to have you both with us, uh, no doubt about that. Uh, tell us a little more about what each of you are working on academically. Kelsey, let's start with you. you you're a freshman. Don't, have, don't expect you to have it all figured out already, but have you selected a major, and what are you focusing on in the classroom? Yes, I have. Um... I'm an exercise science major, and I want to be an occupational therapist, so I'm focusing on that. Outstanding. A g- great program here at Brevard College. Uh, same opportunity for you, Paige. Uh, tell us what you're working on in the classroom. So I am a criminal justice and history major, and then I would like to go to law school after this year. Very good. Well, a bit of a tradition here at tornado talk and i'm sure you guys have caught wind of it you know where you each have the opportunity to take as long as you want to give thank yous and shout outs to anybody who may have helped you along the way somebody who might be tuned into the show or somebody you just want to you know say what's up to uh page why don't you kick us off shout outs oh <laughs> um, of course my teammates because nothing happens without them on the field our goalies are amazing our defense is so solid middies are crazy good and offense is killing it this year of course my parents and everyone who supported me along the way and coach very good well said kelsey hamrick same opportunity for you shout outs or thank yous um i really like thank my parents they are so supportive of everything i do and especially roya she's helped me throughout this my teammates they correct me when i don't know what to do or where when i don't know where to go on the field they'll just pointed out to me. Very yeah. good. Yeah. yeah pr- appreciate all those sentiments. Well, best of luck. The Tornadoes women's lacrosse team will be back in action. A road trip this weekend, Saturday in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina at NC Wesleyan. And the next chance for you to see the Tornadoes at home, Wednesday, March the 27th, 4 p.m. versus Averett. Paige Knibler, Kelsey Hamrick, thanks for joining the program. Great job this evening. Best of luck moving forward. Thank Thank you you. so much. All right, there they go. And we're going to shift gears 
once again, as we're just rolling through spring sports action on this edition of Tornado Talk, we're going to invite in our softball coaching staff, Bree Sharon, head coach, joining the show. How are you, coach? Good. How are you? Doing great. And Taylor Hannah joining us as well. How are you, Coach Hannah? I'm good, Phil. Thanks for having us. Great to have you. Well, fresh off a uh, spring break road trip that, you know, I know, you know, there's all sorts of games you all got in. Uh, there's the list of, you know, the teams that you're able to to get the victories over. Gwinnell, Mercy, Thiel, and also University of Maine, Farmington campus. Uh, Coach Sharon, let's start with you. You know, uh, spring break, always an opportune time for you to get a bunch of games in and that kind of thing. Um, you know, for, for those who weren't able to to, to catch a lot of the, the news or tune into these, um, what we miss and, you know, uh, how did the trip go? It went really well. Um, this is actually the first spring break that I've had as a coach at Brevard with the team just because of weather and, and so much other stuff over the years. But it was exhausting, but they played really well. They fought through it. Um, we had, what, eight games in almost seven days. So that's a lot back to back to back, but they really handled it well. It was a lot of fun. Coach Hannah, you know, a, a trip like this, can can go a long way as far as you know setting the tone for the the rest of the season. Um, what were some of your impressions as far as you know how the team performed this week and how it kind of can springboard towards what's next? Yeah, we our girls got a lot of good at bats, and that was kind of the goal of this trip. Coach Bree and I spent a lot of time, mainly Coach Bree, figuring out our schedule coming into this year, and we knew that this year we wanted to have a lot of games before we hit conference play, and I think we're sitting at 20, 22 games, and we start conference in a week and a half. So that's put us in a really good position. Um, we got to solidify a couple spots, got to move a lot of people around. A lot of different people came off our bench and was able to have some good at-bats. Um, there's a lot of good things that happened. We definitely saw some weak points. We got to do our first ITB, and that's huge for us to get to do before we get to conference. So we're excited to see how we play in conference in a week and a half. Coach Sharon, this year's roster, you know, a lot of new pieces, you know, certainly some some veterans as well, but a lot of new pieces. And I, I'm noticing a lot of them making really big impacts quickly here and, you know, during this non-conference portion of the season. Can you touch on that a little bit for us, you know, as far as, you know, how the, the newcomers have been contributing in such a big way? Yeah, so um, Kenzie Wilborn, she'll be on later. She's hitting a ton right now, as well as uh, Jaden Harlow, Riley Locklear, uh, Peyton, just honestly, all the freshmen are contributing in a really, really good way. Uh, Reagan Winkler, she's a transfer sophomore, still an underclassman, but they, they've they definitely brought a lot of energy with them. Uh, the returners have led them in a really good way, though, so it's been a really good blend all together, but they're swinging the bat very well, which we're happy for last year. Uh, to this year, we've seen a huge jump in our numbers and just a huge jump of people on base and how many runs we've scored already. So that's a great thing going into conference, but the freshmen are, they're holding their own, especially against some other teams that are a lot older than us. So I'm very proud of them. Coach Hannah, that's not something to be taken for granted. It's not easy to come in as a, as a newcomer, you know, to, to college sports and, you know, be able to, to perform right off the bat. But we're seeing that from so many of the, the tornadoes on the softball team. Uh, what do you credit that to? Um, I think, honestly, the three of us hit the recruiting trail really hard with this class. We brought in a huge class, and they were phenomenal athletes, but they're also better people. Um, I think that was a big thing for us was bringing in phenomenal people that we can practice and get them to be even better players. And they just happen to be phenomenal athletes, um, so that just works in our favor. But like Coach Bree said, our upperclassmen are leading them very well, and our underclassmen are pressuring and putting pressure on our upperclassmen. So our practices are more competitive, so then everybody is really just feeding off of each other. Coach Sharon, you mentioned, you know, how many games you all had at, at once on this, you know, late latest road trip during spring break, a trip to uh, Myrtle Beach and then a trip up to Virginia to take on Averett. Well, now there's a little bit of a break in the action, you know, because as we head towards USA South Conference play, the next game on the schedules, Friday, March 29th, back at home against Mary Baldwin. Uh, tell us a little bit about the week ahead or the, you know, week and a half ahead, really, uh, heading towards Mary Baldwin and, you know, how this is such a critical opportunity for the team to continue to improve. Yeah, so it actually wasn't supposed to be a week off, but we ended up moving some stuff around with some of our conference opponents. Um, so it's kind of one of those things we just have to adjust. That's part of the college athlete life and just making adjustments here and there. But 
it'll be a good break for us. Like we've got today, tomorrow off. They'll be back Wednesday through Saturday. We're going to throw live this weekend. So we'll kind of get a mini game day in there where we were supposed to play anyway. Um, but we moved our Meredith college game to the back half of our William Peace trip so that we could stay overnight and have a better experience instead of going back and forth and being so tired. So it'll work in our favor. Um, but this week we're going to do a lot of drills. We, we know exactly what to work on after playing this much. Like Coach Taylor said, like we haven't ever played this much since we've been here before conference opened. So it's a good opportunity for us, and we know exactly where our weaknesses are where some other teams probably don't know that yet. Um, and we're just going to use that and move forward in the practice plans and make sure that we're really airtight going into conference in Mary Baldwin. Well, it will also represent over a month in between home games. And I know NATO Nation is starved to see the, the Tornado softball team back out there in the BC softball field. Uh, Taylor, how critical do you think that'll be and how 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 much the, the team will enjoy that, being back at home after all these road games? Yeah, I think playing at our home field in front of our crowds with everything that we put on when we're at home is just a different atmosphere. We actually had a couple of the guys from the football team. They were in Myrtle Beach, and it kind of felt like a home game a little bit because they were there. They were cheering. They were loud, which was phenomenal. Um, but being able to open conference at home gives us such a leg up. NATO Nation has our back. We're going to play well in front of them. Um, the girls are on a kick that we play better in our all blues, and we wear blue at home. So we're hoping to get four dubs in that weekend when we're opening conference at home. Yeah, dude, no doubt about that. And it starts on Friday, March the 29th versus Mary Baldwin, a one o'clock start. And then the very next day, uh, Southern Virginia uh, starting at one o'clock, a doubleheader on Saturday, March the 30th. Well, Coach Sharon, uh, before we let you go, do want to kind of just sort of take a, a longer view at things. And we, we've, we've discussed this before, but, you know, you've, you've continued to build this program. You know, you've, you've, uh, you know, continue to, um, you know, enjoy the experience here at Brevard College. But tell us a little bit sort of big picture, you know, where we're at as we continue to, to move towards more and more success here at Brevard College softball. Yeah, so a big thing for me was just our culture and like working on that. And we're in a really good spot right now going forward. It took a minute. It always takes a minute when it's a new coach coming in and you're changing so many things, keeping some things the same. But for the most part, we changed a lot when I got here and it took it took some time just to get used to things. And now we're finally there. They're used to it. The incoming classes all get the same recruiting speech. They know what to expect when they get here. And that's a huge thing for a program and just being consistent. So when you're bringing in classes, I'm kind of finally able to breathe a little bit. Um, and I know who we have right now are just paving the way for our future NATOs. We've had a lot of 24s come out and just kind of sit and watch practice. They talk to them a lot. They communicate. Some of them are rooming with some of the incoming class of 24. Like we've got that going already. So the culture is really the biggest thing that takes the most time. And we're finally starting to see the result of all the work. Um, but it's been, it's been a great experience. I wouldn't change it for anything. And this team definitely is one of my favorites. I tell them that all the time. I've been doing this. This is year seven as a head coach and I just enjoy them so much and it makes it easier, but I definitely have to get onto them and I'm stern with them and they understand it. And that's a huge thing for the program as well. Them just understanding it's okay for coach Brady to get onto us because we know what our standard is and we have to uphold that. So they've done a great job, like receiving the feedback and, and fixing it and moving forward. Coach Hannah, anything to add to that? You know, you were here, of course, as a, as a student athlete, now part of the, the coaching staff. You know, the things you're seeing as far as the evolution of the program and in your dealings with with recruits, you know, how, you know, it, it's it's probably becoming in a lot of ways easier and easier, you know, to, to, to tell them what Brevard College softball is all about. Yeah, so my first year recruiting, I kind of got thrown to the wolves. Bree gave me a schedule of like, I think we had 24 tournaments and all summer, and that's a lot. We were gone almost every single weekend my first year. Um, and it's slowly getting a lot easier knowing what our program is. Our girls have our back when we bring in kids. They're very honest with them. Um, and then once they get here, we are upperclassmen again. They're leading very well. They're setting the tone everybody's holding each other accountable. So that makes our job a lot easier when we have players holding each other accountable and then also holding us accountable. Um, there's a couple of times where coach Bree and I were like, maybe we shouldn't do this or maybe we shouldn't do that. And the girls are like, no, we need to, they were holding us accountable in that moment. So I think just seeing that culture shift from, especially when I was a player 
Um, I came in to Brevard at the same time with Coach Bree and just seeing where we were at there to where we are now is like a huge stone, huge stepping stone. So I'm excited to see what the future brings. We have 13 coming in next year as of right now. So that's another big class for us to continue to build from that. Fantastic. Uh, great stuff. Great catching up with with each of you on Brevard College softball. Well, coaches, can you stick around just a couple moments longer? We've got a couple of your student athletes anxious to go backstage here. We're going to invite them into the program. Mackenzie Wilburn uh, has joined us. Also, Riley Locklear. Great to have these two on board. Tornado Talk debuts for these two. Uh, Coach Sharon, tell us a little bit about these two. Yeah, so... Kenzie is from South Carolina. Riley's more local in North Carolina. Um, both freshmen. Riley is an infielder for us, and Kenzie's an outfielder. They both are in the lineup very consistently for us. Um, Kenzie actually started in the infield a little bit, and then we moved her to the outfield, and she's been doing great with that. So they both have really big bats for us. Um, Kenzie normally hits like in the two slot. And Riley was all over the place all weekend. I kept moving her around, and I was like, just bear with me. So she did really well with that. But um, both definite spark plugs for us. Great stuff. Uh, Coach Hannah, anything to add as far as what these two bring to the program? Yeah. Um, Riley and Kenzie both have worked their way into our lineup pretty consistently, and they're huge for us. Um, Ry had a couple really big moments this weekend where she kind of broke the plug. We always give her – we always joke with her because she hits into a lot of double plays. So we always joke around with her, but then she finally broke open and she ripped like four doubles all weekend, which was crazy. Um, and then Kenzie's one of those very consistent players. She doesn't have super high highs emotionally, super low lows, anything like that. She rides pretty consistent for us in that two hole. I get to work with her a lot in the outfield and I enjoy that. Um, Riley rides, Riley rides on my bus when we go on away trips and she is just hilarious. Um, but I enjoy both of them and I'm excited to see how they do over the next four years for us. Outstanding. Well, appreciate the two of you and all you do for Brevard College and Brevard College softball. We'll see you in about 10 days or so over at the Brevard College softball field. Looking forward to that. Thanks for joining the show this evening, coaches. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Phil. All right, there they go. And as they helped us introduce, Mackenzie Wilborn has joined the program. How are you, Mackenzie? Good. How are you? Doing great. And also Riley Locklear has joined us as well. How are you, Riley? I'm good. Well, Tornado Talk debut. First of all, thank you for, for joining the program. Uh, Mackenzie, let's start with you. You know, Tell us a little bit about the season thus far, how you feel like it's been going just for yourself individually, but also for the team. Um, for myself individually, I actually came here as an infielder. Coach Bree had me at second base, and I was doing really good over at second. And then we had some girls leave, and I had to step into the role of going into the outfield. And that was a really big change for me because – I liked to field the balls on the ground and now I'm just a pop-up catcher or field the balls in the air. So that was definitely a big change. I have to work on my throw, but batting, I feel so comfortable in the box right now. And as a team, I think we're doing really good and relying on each other to help. Very good. Uh, same opportunity for you, Riley. Tell us uh, both the season so far for yourself and you know how you think the team's been been doing and where we're heading. Um, for myself, I think I started off pretty rough batting. Um, <laughs> not gonna lie, I didn't do that great, but I was still like um, doing pretty good in the field, so that's what kept me going really. <laughs> and as the like as a team, I think we're doing pretty good. I just think that we need to like like we're doing great working together, but I think there's always more to improve. As we're seeing some of these stats come across, uh, Riley, you've been coming on as of late, you know, five RBIs, four runs scored, a couple doubles, a couple of triples. You're, you're reaching base, you know, via the walk as well. Uh, you had a career high three hits last time's out, you know, versus Averett, you know, uh, just, you know, day ago. Uh, tell us a little bit how you're feeling as of late and what do you think the, the spark has been? Um, I don't know. I'm feeling a lot more confident in the box now. When I first started out, I wasn't confident at all. And now that we're playing more games, I just I'm getting a lot more confident. And I think that's what's helping me hit better. And Kenzie Wilborn with us as well. And you had a couple big ones in terms of game performances as well. And big part of these two wins, if you remember back in Myrtle Beach, went over Maine Farmington and also went over Teal. You went four for six with three runs scored and three RBIs in those back-to-back -back wins. Uh, you remember that performance in particular, uh, Kenzie? And, you know, were you really feeling it that day? 
I was. We actually, before we went and played, we did something different in the batting cage and we worked on extension. And I told Coach Bree that I think working on my extension really helped me. I also stepped in in the box and stood on the plate so I could reach those outsides because most of them were pitching me outside. So I think I got my hands through and just extended on the ball and that really helped me. Yeah, no doubt it shows in the results and so forth. Well, a time now to kind of catch your breath. School's back in session after spring break and so forth. You've got a little bit of time before the next game. Um, We'll start with you, Riley. Like, How excited is the team as far as being able to enter USA South Conference play when the stakes are that much higher? And then you know, for you guys to, to, to continue to succeed this season. Um, I think we're pretty excited, especially since we have um, home openers coming soon. Um, I think playing all the games that we did before conference really helped us a lot, just like the coaches said. So I'm pretty excited, too, to see how we do in conference. Kenzie, anything to add to that? I think we're all really excited. We play some teams that were comparable to our conference, and I think that really helped us show where we can stand in our conference and how we can play against our conference. Now, you both had the chance to experience – a home game on the campus of Brevard College. You know, it had that that home opener back at the end of February, able to take a couple wins in that one, which was which was a lot of fun as well. But as far as the environment, as far as that experience, playing at home, you know, playing on a college campus, all these things, would love to hear how it was from your perspective. Uh, what did it feel like to play at home uh, in that one, Riley? Um, I was really nervous to start out, like when we first started the first inning, but then after that, everyone started like pouring in and I could just feel the support of everyone. And that helps you a lot when you're trying to perform for the team. And my parents were there too. So that made it a lot better. And I just think playing at home is so much better than having to go somewhere and play. Cause you have your, like the college community behind you cheering you on. Kenzie, what was it like for you? It was really good. I was actually in left field and some of the football guys came to left field and stood behind me and were cheering me on. So I felt really good with them behind me, supporting me. And then at the plate, just hearing my family behind me, talking to me through everything and just hearing the support behind me was really nice. Great stuff. Well, we're thrilled to have you as part of the the BC softball program. You know, part of it, you know, the student athlete experience, of course, it's not just softball, but, you know, extracurricular activities, uh, community service, all these things, but also, of course, the academic side of things. Would love to hear what each of you all are working on uh, this semester and, and perhaps, you know, what your plans are moving forward. Understand if you haven't selected a major yet and all that, you know, you, you know, your freshman year, it's, it's a time for figuring out things. But uh, Riley, tell us what you're working on academically. Um, I'm majoring in criminal justice. Um, I'm not really sure what I want to do with it yet, but I know I've known for like such a long time that I wanted to major in criminal justice in the classes here. We have a really good criminal justice program and the teachers or the professors. I just love the professors so much. They're, they're all like really good professors and they're funny. So it makes the classes better. Awesome. Good, great stuff. And uh, totally agree about that criminal justice program here at Brevard College. Uh, Kenzie, how about you? I'm going into elementary education. I want to be a first grade teacher and just getting to, I've gotten to work with some teachers in Brevard Academy and Brevard Elementary and just working with them and seeing how the kids are now just makes me want to help them and get in the classroom and teach them. Outstanding. Well, thrilled to hear you guys are both on your way already on the academic side as well. Great start to your uh, season this year in, in 2024. Can't wait to see what's next. Before we let you go, though, you have the opportunity for shout outs or thank yous. Uh, Riley, anybody to shout out? I want to shout out my parents and the coaches and my teammates, uh, except for Gabby C. Hooper, of course. <laughs> And uh, I just um, I want to thank the coaches for giving me the opportunity to come here and play. And then, yeah. Very good. Kenzie? Um, I would love to thank my parents because they pushed me to keep going in college no matter how much I struggle. All the coaches that have helped me previously before college, um, Coach Bree, Coach Taylor, Coach Emily, for always just believing in me and all my friends that just support me. Well said and well done this evening on Tornado Talk, ladies. Can't wait to see you back at the Brevard College softball field Friday, March the 29th, next time up versus Mary Baldwin. Thanks for joining the show, Mackenzie and Riley. Thank you. Thank you. All right, there they go. We're going to switch gears yet again on this spring sports extravaganza 
as we're going to invite in the baseball coaching staff, head coach Mike Victory, assistant coaches Vinny Carone and Steve Huckey. Uh, coach Victory, how are you? I'm doing well, Phil. Glad to be here. Coach Vinny Carone, back on Tornado Talk. How are you, Coach? Good. Good. How are you doing, Phil? And doing great. And the long-awaited return of Coach Steve Huckey on Tornado Talk. How are you, Coach Huckey? I'm doing great. Outstanding. Well, great to have you, you guys here, Coach. Uh, you know, Victory. We'll start with you. Three game sweep to start USA South Conference play. You know, obviously, you know, uh, great results there. But you know, tell us from your perspective this past weekend. You know. Get kicking off USA South Conference play. Yeah, we certainly got tested early from a good Southern Virginia team. Uh, you know, they were able to, to pitch and definitely hit and challenged our pitchers. Uh, so it was good to play in, in three tight games and, and obviously come out of there with three wins. Uh, I, I've been trying to do the math in my head. I can't remember the last time I had three saves in a single weekend uh, at anywhere that I've been. So that was huge to see our bullpen come in and step out and get big outs at the end of games. And also we, you know, trailed or were tied in, in a lot of those games and had to come back and fight as an offense. So it was one of those well-rounded performances that maybe it wasn't perfect from, from a coaching standpoint, and there's still a lot to build on, but, you know, came out of there with the, the wins that we needed and definitely something to build on as we're moving forward. Coach Carone, anything to add to that? I want to check your uh, mute button there, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it was good to see you guys come together a little bit. It's obviously been a little bit of like a back and forth season up until this weekend, and it felt like guys started to move in the right direction, and the camaraderie was there, and we're just making things happen when we need to. And kind of like Coach said, three saves is unusual in a three-game set. So just winning and making plays when we need to make plays, it was good to see the ball fall our way for once this weekend. Coach Huckey would love your perspective as well, not just this weekend getting off to a 3-0 and start at USA South Conference play, but what's this year's club about altogether? Well, first of all, they got to get, you know, the rookie over here to figure out his microphone and stuff. You know, once you get that, it'll be all right. But, uh, you know, you know I was going to get even with you sometime eventually, Vinny. So, <laughs> uh, no, I think it's, you know, this team uh, right now, I think they're starting to really realize what they're capable of doing. Um, I saw a team a little bit more bonded together uh, this weekend. And I think during the week and practices about really trying to focus on what we need to get better at. And, and uh, um, I saw that, you know, like, you know, Coach Victor and I talked the other day, I said, you know, we're kind of trending up. And I think we're starting to see that a little bit sooner than we have in the past. And so I'm, I'm excited to see how we go into this weekend after coming off the weekend that we just had. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready to get back at it. Yeah, and coming up, you know, it's certainly big test, a trip to Pfeiffer and then a trip to NC Wesley and back-to-back road trips in USA South Conference play. So a grand total of uh, six games before we see the Tornadoes back at Gilcone Field. Uh, Coach Victory, you know, I, I, I know, you know, you know what this USA South Conference is all about, what it takes to, to win these road series and so forth. Tell us about this this test coming up. Hey, home or away, any weekend is going to be difficult once you get into conference play. The energy is different. The, the the intensity of the games is different. So these are two teams that we got to host last year. Uh, took three from Pfeiffer, which I know is not the way that they wanted to come into our place. Uh, so you know the energy there is going to be really high. Uh, it's, it's a unique opponent for us because it's one of the few teams that we've been playing for a long time as a program. So there's history there. Uh, there, there's a rivalry there, but then also a good respect there of, you know, we're going to challenge each other. Even last year, it was close every single game. And, and you know, our guys are going to be excited to go out there. Uh, they're having a little reunion for one of their better teams while we're there. So I'm sure it'll be a great crowd, great turnout. And our guys love a little bit of life. So that'll be awesome. There are also some games under the lights, which, I, you know, I think is a unique experience for, for our guys. And then heading into NC Wesley, and, you know, it's the – the conference champs, the team to beat. Uh, we haven't been there since the 2020 season. So, you know, no, no one that's uh, except for two guys, no one's been out there and, and knows what that's like. I uh, get to play under their new lights there as well. And I'm sure that environment's going to be, you know, the same kind of intensity. They, they have high aspirations. They you know expect to play in a regional expect to win our conference. And we're going to have to go in there with our best to, to beat them and uh, you know, show them that we belong in that conversation as well. 
As Coach mentioned, Coach Carone, you know, that intensity ramps up come conference play, and it continues to grow as you get further and further along. Uh, both your experience, you know, in, in college athletics leading up to this opportunity, but just what you witnessed this past weekend, how that vibe at the Southern Virginia series was different. I see a nod in your head there. It's a different ball game when you get to conference play, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the guys know it coming in, and especially our starters, man, they thrive when – it gets a little hotter in the kitchen. They, they, when people come at them, they definitely respond well. Um, and I think, unfortunately, sometimes they need that to, to play to their best. But when it's conference play, like it automatically starts out with that sort of intensity. And our guys match that energy really well, and they thrive on that energy. And they're just so competitive and all want to win so bad that when, when I was at our place or somewhere else, when people are chipping chirpy or it's a chippy game, like they're ready to go and. They come out and match that energy well, and they play their best in those situations, I feel. Coach Huckey, three of the last four wins have been by one run, and the the other one was by two runs. You know, and, and Coach Victory mentioned, you know, the, the save opportunities and so forth. Coach Huckey, what does it take for, for a team to have that sort of clutch gene and to be able to, you know, win these games in the late innings and that sort of thing? Stay even keel. Um, don't get too high. Don't get too low. Just keep doing what you've been doing at the previous at bats, the previous pitch, the previous defensive play. You know, don't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, You know, the teams that usually lose those kind of games are the ones that make the most mistakes. And just staying consistent and staying on top, and don't let bad situations, you know, mount and become uh, you know a huge uh, obstacle to get over. And and uh, you know, just staying who we are and staying what you can do and, and believe what you can do and just focus on what you're capable, you know, your attitude and your effort and, and then back somebody up, build off of a big play, build off of uh, something that, that goes positive your way. And, and then when something goes negative your way, you know, build yourself back up to go to overcome it and not let it, not it uh, compound to get bigger. So I saw that this weekend, we had moments when we could have gone either way. And um, I saw a couple leaders step up. Even some of the guys that haven't been on the field much were kind of really working hard to keep our guys focused on what the task is. It don't matter how you win. I, I, I tell these guys all the time, I said, I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. So, um, you know, we don't, the games weren't always the most prettiest, but as long as we're one, one run ahead at the end, I don't care how it goes. Well, in Coach Victory, as as Coach Huckey mentioned, contributions from all over, and you know we had this you know amazing walk off with Nico Bartoletti, you know uh, you know finishing things off on on Friday. You know we're seeing guys you know who maybe NATO Nation isn't all that familiar with, you know come up with with big performances and that kind of thing, and really showing the depth of the program and of the team. And, you know, it's just, it's just great to see, you know, this, these kind of results coming from these sorts of places. Um, How how much is that, you know, just critical to this program success moving forward, you know, that it's coming from so many different sources. I I think it starts at practice where all these guys are very talented. Uh, There's a lot of different names that could go onto a lineup card because they have ability and they push each other at practice. You can't take reps off or, you know, take a day off or, you know, just slow down for a minute because someone's going to try to pass you. Someone wants to get that playing time and they see that as a valuable thing. The the guys that have been doing it a long time love knowing that there's someone pushing them and coming for them from behind. It makes them have to keep getting better. And then they set a great example for younger guys that they're is a standard of, of talent and, and work ethic and just the way you have to carry yourself on a daily basis to play in our lineup and to, to keep yourself there. So those young guys learn quickly what it takes to be a guy for us. And I think that's an important lesson to be passed down from, from our oldest guys. And it means we have a lot of options. We can make moves. We can make decisions. We can make changes. We can even give a guy a day off. I mean, that's been a big change for us is knowing that, like, if someone is tired or a little banged up, we can make a move and there's not this huge step backwards. There's other guys that can do it. And and there are young guys, too, that are getting their feet wet that are going to take over when the big names that everyone knows are going to move on and the program is going to continue to be in a great place and continue to follow the, the legacy that they're building because there's young guys just chomping at the bit knowing that their moment's coming at some point. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Coach Carone, 17 games into this season, your your first season at Brevard College. What are some of your impressions, you know, the team, the 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 culture at Brevard College, you know, just the, the overall opportunity for you personally? Uh, tell us what it's been like. First off, it goes fast. I've talked with some of the, the juniors and seniors, and they kind of have that um, from a four-year perspective as well, that it, it's just gone by so fast. It's hard to believe we're 17 games in already. We're halfway through a season almost. Um, I still feel like, I guess my overall takeaway is that we're still progressing and moving forward, that we're not at our best yet. And I think that's maybe not what we expected at the beginning of the season because we have so many juniors and seniors contributing. Um, and I know those guys had high aspirations and high goals for themselves and for this team. And we maybe didn't start off on the foot we wanted to, but they've kind of taken that adversity and we've gotten better from it. And we're starting to learn more of the small details that we need to do to win games. And because they want to be good, they're willing to put in the work at practice. And I think that's really going to help us long-term to be better. And we talked about it this whole broadcast, just winning those close games. And I think that is happening because we're putting the work in at practice and they're not letting those small details go by. They know how hard it is to win college baseball games and they're paying attention to those small details in practice. And, like Coach Huckey said, like you got to do those small things in games if you want to win close games. You can't can't make those mistakes. Um, and so I think we're really going to start hitting our stride right now. I felt confident with our guys this weekend. I felt like it was the first weekend where it kind of went smoothly on most cylinders. Um, it's never going to be perfect in baseball, but I felt like it was the most put together weekend we've had. Um, and so hopefully we keep building off that and that that pays off well moving forward in conference play. Yeah, great stuff. Appreciate that perspective. Coach Huckey, you know, now that you've been here a few years, uh, you know, you're entrenched here at Brevard College, not only part of the baseball coaching staff, you you know, you're a key part of the team over on the admission side of things here at Brevard College. Um, what are the things you're noticing with Brevard College baseball and maybe the college as a whole, as far as, you know, uh, you know, where we're continuing to grow, continue to uh, add on to the success from years past? Well, I mean, not being here during the, uh, the Division II era and not really understanding what the culture was like before, um, but then how our Division Three really meets uh, the vision of what our, our campus is about. And, I, and I'm seeing, you know, the, the hard work of all the coaches and all the, all the programs are putting in to, to really maintain and build and build something special here. And I know when Coach Victory uh, came in and, had that first meeting with me and was a little bit concerned because here comes an old crusty veteran coming in who's had tons of years of experience. He's like, is this guy going to fit in or not? And I said, when I, I think the first statement I said, Hey, I knew what I wanted from my assistants. I'm going to give that to you. And we've been fine ever since. And, and when we just really latched on to each other and really worked hard to create a culture of, you don't want to go out there and just hope to win you expect to win and then you handle the losses in a way to where it pushes you to get better and make your, make your program better. And in the long run, like coach says, you've got guys knocking on the door. If you don't perform well, someone might take your spot and a little bit of playing with a little bit of fear sometimes makes players rise to the best of their ability. And I think we're starting to see a little bit of that. Some young guys kind of hyped up through their JV to the, through the developmental game and, and some guys got some good ABs and good swings and, there were some there were some well hit uh, balls that some of the older guys that uh, took notice and uh, I've seen a little bit different attitude throughout the whole program this uh, since that time and it's just fun to be a part of, of of a culture of not just within the baseball program but from all around the whole the whole campus of the excitement that all the programs bring um, to each other um, having football guys over there razzing the other team you know having the, the women's lacrosse team there you know. You know, shout out to Roya there and her team. They got some good one-liners on hitters and stuff like that. And going to basketball games and seeing our guys there, you know, it's just a fun culture to be involved in. And I'm glad that that I've been here long enough to help kind of build that culture with Gold Victory, you know, who's got the toughest name in coaching. So i um, trying to make sure I keep that legacy going for him. One more, Coach Victory, before we kind of um, move on here, because we've got your, your student athletes ready to go backstage. But what folks don't realize often is what happens away from the games. And there was two examples of that this past weekend. Friday, 
an absolute uh, downpour uh, as far as rain and thunderstorms and that kind of thing. The start time was pushed back an hour for the game one of the Southern Virginia series. But the work that the, you know, the three of you, um, you know, everybody involved in the program, all the players put in to get that field in playing shape for Friday uh, did not go unnoticed by me, but probably, you know, people just take it for granted. Oh, the, the you know, the, it's time for baseball. And then the other um, moment I want to mention is the contributions to Brevard College baseball, giving back to the community with a program with the Transylvania County Little League this past weekend. Little League Day, Little League Day at the field, but also the opportunity for a coaches clinic on Sunday, which was an off day uh, for the team. Uh, great partnership there, but it just shows, you know, the culture of Brevard College baseball and how you know the, these um, student athletes do so much more than what we see on game day. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the, the other duties as assigned real quick when it comes to rain. You know, that's that's part of it. We get it. Um, you know, when you live in a rainforest, stuff's going to happen. You go through a lot of turfus. It was fine. We're, I'll take we're great and I both sitting in the outfield, pumping water, talking about teaching in our in our teaching degrees and what we did and how we ended up here. Absolutely. But do I love it? 100 percent. The, is it fire me up to know that we got that field ready and we got to play on Friday? That that it's a big part of the job. I I didn't realize how much I loved being out and being in my mutters and and working with my hands just to get a field ready until I started doing it. And it's it's rewarding just to see our guys get to play, and that's always one of the most important things for me. Uh, and the Little League Day was it, it's really fun that we've been able to do that. I think year one, starting with COVID, feeling very disconnected from the community was hard and. It took a little while for us to build that connection back up. It's obviously a benefit to have, you know, Hall of Fame Ray Gill as the president of the Little League, so it's a it's a huge connection for us. Uh, but there were it's doubled in size in the last two years. There were about twenty kids last year, about forty kids out there watching this year, chasing down foul balls, getting their bubble gum, uh, and, and you know we went to the the clinic and you know the coaches' clinic's cool. We work with these t-ball coaches who are you know they're bright eyed trying to figure out how to coach their kid just like I was trying to keep coach Sully in soccer this year. So it's fun to help them along. But then as the kids start showing up and they were there the day before, they're like, Hey, where's Frankie? Where's Kale? Where's Logan? And, and that was one of the coolest things for me is to see them have those, you know, their favorite player from our team. And, and for our guys, I think that changes the perspective on what you do. And it really brings to light how important what you do on a daily basis is to represent not just you, not just our program, but your family. And, and, you know, when they know your name and, and they know how you act, you, you have to kind of stand up a little bit straighter and, and, you know, keep an eye on your behavior a little bit more to realize there's there's so much going on outside of you. And for these kids to see our guys and, you know, want to follow along and, and, you know, look for them in a crowd and come to our games. And I think that's a that's an awesome experience for, for our players. Uh, and, and I think they remember how fun the game can be. When you're working with, you know, our freshmen worked with a lot of four to eight year olds who are just learning how to throw, and then we work with some nine to twelve year olds who, you know, are starting to hit the ball hard and throw the ball hard, and and they see how much fun these kids are having, and that's what baseball is. It's so much fun, and that's why all of us do it. So I love making them do that, and maybe it's scary for them to get down there with a four year old every once in a while, but it's 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 that giving back to baseball that's most important. And we have local guys in the program. We have Brevard High guys. We have Hendersonville guys. And if we can make baseball in the mountains, great. That's a huge success for us in our program. Well said, Coach. Re really appreciate that answer. And uh, thanks again for the leadership, all three of you, as far as molding these student athletes and uh, giving back, as well as, you know, of course, all, all that they're doing on the field and in the classroom. Well, coaches, stick with us just a moment longer. We're going to bring in a couple – Baseball student athletes have been waiting patiently backstage. Hayden Jennings and Blake Altschuler have both joined the conversation. We'll go around the horn here. We'll start with Coach Huckey. Tell us a little bit about these two, Coach Huckey. <laughs> Hi, Hayden. <laughs> uh, uh, these guys are great guys to be around. I mean, uh, been around Hayden now for quite some time. And I remember going down to watch him at the, the, uh, the, uh, uh PBR complex down in Atlanta and, and coach Vic and I were talking, sitting there watching him is going to be the guy who can come in and be somebody for us. And I think he's starting to show a little bit what he was, what we saw in him 
And I know he's had to overcome a little uh, a little uh, injury here and there, but he's always there grinding. He's always there trying to make the team better. He's doing what he can to help everybody else. Um, and that's a true example of a teammate. And I think the, the some of the other guys are, are watching and learning from him in regards to how he interacts with everybody from a freshman all the way up to seniors and, and uh, how he interacts with the umpires, um, probably better than I do. Um, and, you know, just has, you know, this has a, a love for the game and, uh, it's fun to see him developing right now. In fact, I think you're, he's our, our, our quad leader, aren't you? I think so right now it's 71%. So, you know, he's, he's doing what he needs to do to get on base and score some runs. Blake's a kid I've been watching for quite some time. Um, we've got quite a few kids from the Charlotte baseball club and, and he was one kid that, uh, um, a, a buddy of mine who runs a program over there was really you know, trying to, to hype him up a little bit and get him going and. And uh, to see him come in as a freshman and do what he's doing right now with the chance of that window, that ceiling still growing. He's still got a high ceiling. And just to see him compete and see him get after it. And, and this, even when he comes in, he's had a great inning, but he didn't feel like it was a good inning for him. You know, he, just to have that competitive nature and not to go to focus and get ready to go and go back out and then try to do better than what he did the inning before. And I think sometimes that's tough for pitchers to do. Um, you know, if you get knocked around a little bit, walk a few guys, hit a few guys, sometimes it's hard to overcome that. And he's he's worked hard to overcome that. So it's fun to see him developing and getting to where I think he's going to be someone's going to be pretty special for us. So, Yeah, no doubt about it. Well said, Coach Huckey. Coach Carone, tell us even more about these two. Yeah, um, both of them are just, I think, Great examples of two people who work really hard and kind of do the right thing day in and day out. Hayden, as Coach Husky um, kind of elaborated on, has had some adversity, and I'm a real, a real soft spot for guys who have had adversity and had to overcome things. And Hayden's done a great job this year, of just kind of going and doing his role to the best of his ability, and his role is starting to expand now because of that. Um, and then Blake is just, I mean, he's so methodical in his work ethic. Um, he, he does his pitching routine day in and day out to the best of his ability. He doesn't take any shortcuts and he's rewarded for that on Sundays or Saturdays, whatever day he pitches. Um, and it's great to see a guy who puts in the work during the week, be rewarded for it on the weekend. Um, and, and he really hasn't had any like freshman jitters because he is so much of a perfectionist in everything he does, whether it's in the weight room or it's in his bullpen, like he wants everything to go exactly how he wants it to go. And then he gets out there in the games and the same intensity that he has in his bullpens and his work ethic. So, um, he's a great example, and Blake's going to be a great example long-term for guys who come into this program of what hard work is, and Hayden's already been that example of what hard work is for the last two, now going on three years, and that's why he's the captain of this program. So um, just two great um, role models for Brevard baseball, and it's good to have them on the show today to kind of show people what Brevard baseball is all about. Coach Victory? And they're Foxhole guys. They're the guys that when – everything's going wrong and you're in the thick of it, you want them on your left and on your right because they're prepared. They've trust everything that they've done and you know that they've put in the work. And if you need someone to have your back, you want these two guys to have your back. And, and that's, you know, the example that they should set for everyone around them. And that's a, a you know, a, a huge thing to have guys in your program that you never have to worry about because they're going to take care of it themselves. And that's big. And that's why you know, they are leaders and are going to be leaders and, and they make our program better every day. Outstanding. Coach Mike Victory, Coach Vinny Carone, Coach Steve Huckey, thanks for joining the program. Best of luck on the road trips beginning this weekend at Pfeiffer. Uh, we'll see you back here at Brevard College. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Thank you, Phil. All right, there they go. And joined now by Hayden Jennings and Blake Altshuler. Great to have these two aboard. Hayden, the junior from Beaufort, South Carolina. How are you, Hayden? Good. How are you doing, Phil? Doing great. Great to have you guys aboard. And Blake Altshuler making his Tornado Talk debut, the freshman right-handed pitcher from Concord, North Carolina. How are you, Blake? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you guys. Well, Hayden, let's start with you. You know, uh, quite the weekend, right? Like, you know, you take on Southern Virginia, USA South Conference, opener three really tight games. Uh, tell us from, from your perspective, you know, what was the key to the Tornadoes coming out victorious and with the sweep? Well, you know, I think as our coaches talked about, we haven't really started the way we wanted to. We've been kind of, you know, a 500 ball club up until this weekend. And I think we just 
we all know, especially the upperclassmen, that uh, when you get in a conference, everything changes. The level of intensity, the play, everything just rises. And it's kind of like what Hucky was saying. Like we were starting the year expecting to win and it just didn't go our way. But we go into conference and it just flips a switch. And I think that's a, uh, I think that's one thing we're going to need, need to keep when, uh, when we move forward this season. And, and we'll stick with you, Hayden, as we're seeing some of your numbers there. Big performance on game two of the series, the win over Southern Virginia. This was a 12 to 10 slugfest, and you were right in the middle of it. A huge two RBI uh, single back in the third that put the, you know, the tornadoes up six to five. Uh, you had a double as well and a couple of runs scored. And then you also, you know, were the starting catcher for this game, uh, you know, handling catching duties for t- four uh, total pitchers coming all the way down to that last inning, the save by Ethan Coleman and so forth. But tell us about that game in specific, Hayden, for you. You know, uh, congratulations on, on a spectacular game that day uh, individually. But would love to hear from your perspective what that day was like for you. Uh, I just want to first say thank you. And last week when we had spring break, we had a big group of guys throughout the whole week going on the field and getting a really good amount of swings in. And I started tweaking some stuff with my stance, with my swing. And something just clicked for me, and it felt like for a while I just haven't had that click. And I went into that first at bat, game two, and everything just felt right. And from there, the momentum carried me forward. Blake Ochuler with us as well. And Blake, you got to love getting the sweep. And you were obviously a huge part of that, the, you know, the game three starter. Um, would love to hear from your perspective as far as the mentality of the team, you know, how important it was obviously to, to get that sweep, and you guys delivered. Yeah, it's big to get sweeps here in uh, conference play, and we know every win in conference matters, even if we're already up 2-0 in a series or we're gridlocked in a series of 1-1. Every game's every game's huge for uh, positioning, and uh, we just really fight for the wins. And I know my job is to keep us in the game as long as possible. I see our hitters out there. Today is a Monday. It was an off day, and dudes are out on the, on the field hitting for four hours when we don't have practice. And I know those guys, the hits are going to come even if they're not early in the game. So it's – It's really my job to just keep us in the game as long as I can because I know the hits are going to come and we're going to come back in the games. Yeah, and Blake, you got that win in in game three. Career high innings pitch, career high uh, total pitches thrown, um, five strikeouts, just allowed two runs, seven hits. And the number that I like the most, no walks, which is absolutely huge. Um, Love to hear your perspective as far as how you were feeling on Sunday and, you know, being able to go that deep into the game. Yeah, uh, I personally, I didn't feel I had my best stuff on Sunday. I definitely left a lot of it on the table. Like, that's why I gave up so many hits. But I really battled through some adversity not having a great slider that day. And uh, I figured it out. But I knew that if I competed, I would still be able to get away with not having my best stuff. Hayden, what what are you observing from from Blake Ochuler? You know, we're we're seeing a, a pretty sensational start to his collegiate career as as a freshman here, and uh, putting up big numbers back to back USA South Rookie Pitcher of the Week. Uh, from from your perspective, from the catcher's perspective, uh, what are we witnessing here? Well, with Blake, you get a lot of poise on the mound. Nothing really rattles him too much. He's a he's a very finesse and power kind of pitcher, which a lot of the times at our level you don't see a whole lot of guys like that. He can locate every pitch and also blow the doors off some hitters, which is very interesting to watch and catch when I get to catch him. Yeah, I'll let you return the flavor, Blake. Uh, Tell us a little bit about Hayden Jennings, what kind of teammate he is. When when Hayden gets in the box and there's runners on, uh, the other team better watch out because this dude will get some ribbies and put the ball in play and uh, do his job when he gets up to the plate. And it's really really fun to watch him hit. And uh, as well, he helps us out throughout the week, catches my bullpens. He doesn't catch my games, but – Hato really, really is good behind the plate when he works with Tomp, and uh, it's really good to see him when he's out there. Yeah, good, great stuff. Uh, Hayden Jennings and Blake Ochuler join us here coming off the season opening sweep over Southern Virginia to open USA South Conference play. Uh, Hayden, junior from Beaufort, South Carolina, tell us a little bit about your baseball journey. You know, when did you start playing? When did it start becoming serious and that kind of thing? And then ultimately finding your way to college baseball in Brevard College. Yeah, so I started playing around, you know, four or five years old, just when a lot of uh, other college baseball players start playing t-ball. And I played travel ball and rec ball growing up and everything, and it kind of got serious around freshman, sophomore year in high school and started going to play in some bigger tournaments in front of some college scouts and other people like that. And, uh, yeah, during COVID is when I really saw the biggest 
recruitment jump for me. I was talking to Coach Vic, uh, Coach Hucky, and uh, Coach Julian when he was still here. And like Hucky mentioned, they watched me play down in a tournament in Atlanta. And they really liked me, and they kept me in contact. And then I ended up committing here October of 2020, and I haven't regretted it since. Yeah, appreciate that, and glad you found your way here to Brevard College. Uh, Blake Altshuler, tell us a little bit about your journey uh, out of Concord, North Carolina. So I started when I was like four or five, same as Hato. Uh, but my baseball journey is a little bit different than most people. Um, when I was in high school, I really only had two full seasons of college baseball. COVID cut my freshman season short. I had a bad concussion my junior year, so that cut my season. Took took a good bit of my season away from me, and then uh, my senior year I wasn't allowed to play. So I really had like some adversity that I had to handle. And coming out of high school, I had one offer, and it was to here. And I really just looked at myself and saw like, wow, you gotta you gotta get it together, or else you're not gonna play when you get there. So I really started working on it like my senior year, and once I figured it out, everything just started clicking, and then I'm here. Yeah, dude. Awesome stuff. Appreciate you sharing all that, Blake. And, um, you know, just thrilled that you're part of this Brevard College uh, family here and uh, off to a great start here in your your freshman season. Well, we're just getting started, you know, three games into the conference schedule. Uh, I know you guys um, are anxious to get back at it. Next up is Pfeiffer, then a trip to NC Wesleyan. Uh, Hayden, what's going to be the key moving forward, you know, as far as this team uh, being successful and uh, d reaching your absolute potential? Yeah, so, I mean, I'll just start with a little background. Whenever I got here freshman year, we just heard a lot of talk about the teams that were legit in our conference and that those are the kind of guys we wanted to be like. And I think that with our group now, we've had more talent than we've ever had. And I feel like we're just getting started, just like as Car uh, Coach Carone said. I mean, we haven't hit our stride at all yet, and I think that's really interesting to see. Uh, obviously, going on the road and playing at Pfeiffer and Wesleyan back-to-back -back is going to be pretty challenging, but I think that uh, coming off that series sweep, I think we're ready and we want more. So I think that the biggest key for us is just to remain focused and keep pushing because we just haven't reached our potential yet. Blake would love your perspective on that as well. What's going to be the key moving forward, you know, not just for the team at large, but, you know, uh, for the pitching staff and, and you know, who, who you obviously a part of. I think uh, so this upcoming week, super personal for me. I have a lot of buddies on Pfeiffer and uh, personal for a lot of other players. We're, we're from that Charlotte area. And this, this week is a big week for us. And uh, we get to go home, home in a sense and uh, show like what we have in front of our family. That's going to be closer and you got to have a lot more people there. Uh, but from a pitching pitching perspective, um, I think we just need our pitchers to focus and pitch with intent. And if we pitch with intent and show everything we have and compete every at bat, don't get don't take your foot off the gas at all. I think we can be successful, very successful against everybody we play against. Yeah, great stuff. Just a couple more before we let you go. Let's go off the field a little bit, you know, in this opportunity over the weekend to do some community uh, outreach and give back to the Transylvania County Little League. What a group to be able to give back to because you get to, you know, be around baseball that much more. But they came out to the game on Saturday. The team came out and uh, helped them out on Sunday with a coach's clinic. Uh, Hayden, you know, how gratifying is that for, for, for you all, members of the Brevard College Tornadoes, to be able to interact with the, these little leaguers and try to help them along? You know, it's really cool, especially when we have Little League Day and have the kids run out with us. And last or uh, this past weekend, we had, I think, I heard over 40-plus Little League kids out there. And, I mean, it's, it's really cool to see because – just like our coaches were saying, how they have favorite players on our team. And I think that's something that's really changed our culture in the past two years is giving back to the community. They want to come watch us. They know that we'll always be there if they need us to come help with practice or hang banners on their uh, Little League fields like we did last spring or help with the coaches clinic, talking to coaches that are maybe getting into baseball and maybe have been playing baseball their whole life, seeing things from a different perspective. I think that baseball is an interesting game because the more things you hear, the better you get at that sport, especially for baseball. So, yeah. Yeah. Blake, I'd love to hear your perspective because to me, baseball is such a interesting sport. Like, like Hayden said, where there's that bond, whether you're a little leaguer, 
a high school player, a college player, you're playing in the minor leagues to the, to the big leaguers, you know, there's the bond that you guys all sort of speak the same language, play the same sport. And so, you know, being able to, to give back to the little league had to be special. Yeah, I really, I had a great time because for me, I know I get, I overcomplicate things. I overcomplicate everything when it comes to baseball and uh, super, super organized. And I care about outcomes and I get upset when it's not what I want it to be. And uh, when it comes to that, I got to see like four to eight year olds that weren't the best baseball players, but they didn't care. They just had fun. And I think that actually showed a lot to not just me, but like the whole team to see why these kids just love the game and we, it really gave the meaning back to me of why I love the game of baseball and why I play. Yeah, awesome stuff, fellas. Hayden, tell us what you're up to academically. Uh, I'm a business and organizational leadership major and an exercise science minor currently, and I'm in the honors program here. Uh, outstanding. Uh, Blake, have you selected a, a major? Yes, I'm actually a business major as well. Outstanding. Well, uh, best of luck on those endeavors to each of you. Also, before we let you go, want to give you the opportunity for any shout outs or thank yous. Anybody who might be tuning in or catching to this program at any point or someone you just want to thank for helping you out along the way. Hayden, get us started. Uh, first, I want to shout out my parents. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. Uh, I want to shout out my teammates for pushing me every day. And it's just a really cool bond that we get to have. And lastly, I want to thank my coaches for everything they've done for me while I've been here and while I continue to be here. So. Well said Blake shout outs. Yeah. I want to shout out my family back home, dad, mom, siblings, uh, my sister, not my siblings, uh, my cousins, my aunts, uncles, grandparents, they're probably all watching this right now and I'll shout them out. And then uh, I want to shout out my teammates. They got my back when I'm on the mound and uh, they're just there with me every step of the way. I also shout out my throwing partner, Jager Hankowski. <laughs> Uh, he's back in the room watching this, so I'll say what's up to him. And then uh, Biscuit's probably watching it with him, too, so shout out out. I'll throw in a little shout out too, Blake, to your uncle Kerry, you know, who, who I know from, you know, the baseball statistics world, you know, down at, down in uh, Miami, Florida, uh, great to see him part of this, uh, you know, Brevard college, uh, NATO nation now as well. But Hey guys, thanks a lot. Uh, Blake Altshuler, Hayden Jennings. Great to catch up with you guys here on tornado talk. Uh, best of luck this weekend versus Pfeiffer. Uh, we'll see you back at Gilcone field. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Phil. All right, that rounds out another edition of Tornado Talk. Glad you're able to join us for this one. Be sure to follow the Tornadoes on social media and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well so you receive all the notifications when the Tornadoes go live. All sorts of action coming up as the spring sports continue. Look forward to seeing you hopefully at another Brevard College Tornado Athletic event. want to thank those behind the scenes, including Sports Information Director Joseph Marvin and production support from Cassidy Hutto and Emily Danega. Have a very pleasant rest of your Monday evening. Go Tornadoes!